to my people with gut problems whether you're suffering from a reflux disease we call it gut gastroesophageal reflux disease or disorder gastritis and chronic gastritis crohn's disease diverticulus ulcers or even h pylori as you put it these are conditions of the gut basically a messed up gut so all those conditions if you're suffering from them at this moment in time if you not figured out how to come out of them possibly you are just the joke the truth is any health condition it starts by healing the gut so for you to heal any med any medical condition uh, specifically chronic conditions you must start by healing the gut so if you have this condition that I just mentioned stop looking for help in hospitals stop going to do a h pylori test to see how you're doing stop going there and taking kits that is the truth and i'll not hide this from you i'm telling you the truth because most h pylori tests are actually exploitative most uh, brucella tests are actually exploitative most uh, typhoid tests are exploitative <coughs> okay so you need to actually know these gut problems can only be fixed when you start taking note and changing that kitchen you need to drop that cooking oil that you call the seed oil you see, I'm telling you the truth because this is just a secret that I need to tell you either way. But it's not a secret. It's something that can actually happen to you. Most people have gone through gastritis. I used to have very bad gastritis in high school. And then I would blame it on beans. I'll blame it on sukumawiki. I dropped all of them, but my gastritis didn't go away. I know you've also been told, oh, drop citrus fruits because they are acidic and they'll cause you problems. But the same, same person who told you that does not tell you that your stomach has an acid. That does not irritate you naturally. So what happens if you eat a citrus fruit? Uh, when you already have an acid in the stomach so the idea is hyper acidity the idea is that if you add more acids to the stomach you will end up having more problems but the truth is that is not right if you neutralize that stomach acid that's when you get into problems because you now go against nature nature detect dictates that the stomach must have an acid and the concentration must be as low in terms of ph so that it's highly concentrated to actually destroy microorganisms to actually help you digest protein so that you don't end up having bloating to actually protect you from H. pylori and most of these conditions that we get from food and water, including cholera, typhoid, and brucellosis. All right? Because I remember when I mentioned uh, uh, taking milk without having to boil it, somebody was saying, but how about brucellosis? I'm like, no, you cannot blame a microorganism because they're always there. You need to fix your gut so that this microorganism cannot survive there. So therefore, drop the seed oils, drop the wheat, drop sugars, drop alcohol as we agreed uh, on in the previous videos. And then drop all processed foods because they are non-essential. They have no nutrition. They are just inflammatory to the gut and they are messing you up. All right. Drop the simple carbohydrates, ugali being part of that, and rice. They are part of that. So you need to actually drop these things. And then, of course, the question comes in. So then if I drop ugali, what will I eat? Truth is, you have complex carbohydrates that serve the, serve the same purpose, only that they come with fiber that is good for the gut. So you have uh, sweet potatoes, you have arrow roots, you have green bananas, you have butternuts, you have beans, you have um, uh, is it pumpkins, dimension pumpkins. You can do those things. But I know somebody will also tell you that, you know what, a sweet potato will cause you uh, problems. The truth is sweet potatoes and beans and sukumawiki are very good at exposing the already existing problem. They don't cause the problem. They expose the already existing problem. Just the same way, eggs expose a messed up gut and you end up seeing it on the skin and then you blame it on the eggs. So you drop the eggs, but your gut is still a mess. So you drop the beans, but you still have gastritis. You drop the sukumawiki, but you still experience reflux disease when you eat some other foods. Your problem is weak addiction. Your problem is sugar and processed foods. Your problem is you eat every single time. You eat frequently and you eat the wrong products. So start eating natural foods. You cannot use fermented cabbage to actually come in and heal a gut. Fermented cabbage and cabbage juice are not used to heal a gut. They are used to repopulate the gut. And they can actually help you in the healing process once it's already started. But you cannot eat all these wheat products and these processed foods and then go and take glasses of fermented cabbage or, uh, fermented or cabbage juice hoping that your gut problems will disappear. They can't because you're still feeding the problem. It's just the same way a diabetic person constantly eats ugali this size and then takes medication to lower blood sugars and then tomorrow they're still diabetic. So they're basically masking the symptoms. Because if the goal was to lower the sugars, they've won the goal. Why is, why is it that tomorrow they have to take another medication? The goal, if the goal was to actually take cabbage juice and you heal from gastritis, why is it that you still have the gastritis even after taking cabbage juices? Even after taking fermented cabbage? Even after taking kefir? Even after taking all those antacids every single time? 
and the PPIs and the kits, how is it possible that you still have the recurrence of this? It basically means you're feeding the condition and then pretending to use these other products to fix the symptoms. We cannot fix symptoms. We will have to focus on the causes of the problem, drop those causes. Now we stop feeding the condition. Once we do that, we allow the body a chance to start healing and rejuvenating. And then we supplement it through foods and now these fermented stuff and the supplements also sometimes. So we do that. Once we do that, now the body gets a reason to actually heal and come back to normal. It does this job for you. It was designed perfectly to heal itself. So you can't do that. You can't eat all the unhealthy foods and inflammatory foods and then you go ahead and take a product to actually mask the symptoms. You will suffer because when you have a messed up gut, you are exposing yourself to more problems. Malnutrition, including obesity. You are exposing yourself to food addictions. You are messing up microorganisms in the gut. Now you get into cravings and your uh, habits with food are a mess. You are messing up the gut. Therefore, you are having problems with sleep because sleep has to come from a fixed gut. Your skin becomes a problem. Your brain becomes a problem. Fogging and all that. So basically your entire system relies on the gut. That's a, f a tube that feeds the other uh, organs. It must be fixed. So take some responsibility and become better. We can't keep on talking about uh, gastritis, gastritis, gastritis. We can't. We will talk about it, yes, for a reminder or uh, as a reminder. But we can't focus on it every single time. Because I see it every day that there's somebody who is suffering from gastritis. Is somebody who is suffering from H. pylori. Even those people that have actually consulted, they will still come back with the test for H. pylori and tell me, Doc, you know I turned, H. Pylori, uh, I turned positive for H. pylori. Should I take the kits? They have already bought the kits, so they are just coming to me so that I can actually approve they can take the kits. I will tell you, yes, take the kits, because the truth is you will take those kits and you've already made up your mind you want to take the kits. So yes, take the kits and see what happens to you. If you have a recurrence, now we can sit down and talk about it. So we, can, we, we, we need to take responsibility and fix what we need to fix and become better every single day. Gastritis cannot be healed through medication. Because remember, some of these medications for gastritis and the gut, the reflux disease, are actually exposing you to the same, same condition. Because you see you take an antacid, the suspension, or the tablets, or the, 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 what do you, the gels. You take them, yes. On the surface level, they look very good because they will neutralize the stomach acid because you are suffering from hyperacidity, a very false diagnosis. You have hyperacidity. Hyperacidity does not make sense because your stomach needs to have an acid either way. So if you have excess acid in the stomach, it basically means you either have a condition that is causing an excess production of the acid, like a gastric tumor that can actually mess your system entirely so that the body starts to produce more of the acid. That one makes sense. But you see, in that case, even if you take an antacid, have you fixed the problem? The tumor is still there. So therefore, once the antacid goes down, you still produce more of the acid. So the tumor has to be removed. That's a different case. But in case of these issues of reflux, reflux is not hyperacidity. Reflux basically means your stomach pH is high. 